I'm tired, man. I've been sleeping all weekend. Yesterday was my day off. I slept all day on and off. I woke up about 2 o'clock this morning, started watching The Godfather at about 5.36 and fell asleep. Then I woke up, thought I'd do my Army Life video. Germany. That's right. I was in Germany twice. The first time I was there, uh, well, both times I was there for three years. So six years total in Germany. Three years, came back to the States, went back for three more. And the first time I was there, I remember we landed and I was stationed at a thing, a place, a thing, a place called McNair Kasern in Frankfurt. Um, and I'll put the link to it right there. That's McNair Kasern. We were right across the street. McNair Kasern was right across the street from this huge park, a huge park with a field and ducks and a big huge lake. Uh, it was really freaking pretty cool. Um, and, and McNair Kasern was in, actually in a town called Herxt. I don't know if I said that. Herxt was like a factory, a big factory there in, in the town of Herxt. Uh, that's what it was famous for, I think. Um, something, I'll put that in the link as well. You can kind of read about it if you want. But um, it was really nice to go for walks across into the park. And, then, and when you went through the park, you would go down into different little... Uh, German towns and stuff in the back of the towns and at night it was really cool because you see the fire bugs how many have ever been to Disneyland and well I think they have these down south too but at Disneyland you go through the Pirates of the Caribbean ride and they got the little fire bugs they, they had those in Germany and literally they're like little lights flying around it was and, and you're probably going okay dude you get you get way too excited but I had never seen anything like that. I mean, I saw that at, at that ride, the Pirates of the Caribbean. But I don't think I had ever seen really light bugs or fire bugs or anything like that for real. But it was just weird to see little lights. What the hell? Little lights. Give him a good swift kick. That'll shut him up. Kicking my camera here. <coughs> But uh, we were in orientation there for like four weeks. Uh, the first four weeks we had to go through orientation. That's where we learned uh, the German road traffic light, uh, laws and stuff. We learned about road traffic signs. Uh, we had to learn how to uh, drive on the German roads. Because I had to drive a military vehicle. I had to learn to drive a military vehicle there. We learned how to order uh, food in German restaurants. I don't know if you know this, but... When you pay for your food there, when they gave you your check in a restaurant, you also paid the tip in that check. You know, like here, they give you a check and then you, whatever you want to leave as a tip, you leave as a tip. Um, well, you can leave whatever you want as a tip there as well, but they would, uh, you know, have the price of your food and then a mandatory 15%, in, in, um, I guess almost like what we would call a sales tax here. Only for them it wasn't sales tax, it was a um, uh, waiter tip. Literally, you had to pay your waiter a tip. If you wanted to or not, to pay the meal for the meal, you had to pay the tip because it was in the check. Uh, they did. They had the price of the meal and then they had, I think it was called, uh, in German, I think it was, in English it would have been like gratuity. So the price of the meal and then gratuity. And then, you know, that was your total, that's what you paid for the meal. So you had to leave a tip, whether you wanted to or not, just to pay for the meal. It's just... They taught us that. We had to learn German. You know, ein Bier, zwei Bier, drei Bier. Uh, and we all laughed about that, too. That this means one. You know, if you wanted to order a beer, if you went like, Bier bitte? They would bring you two beers. They would, because that means zwei, or two. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, elf, twelve. So that's a, I counted up to twelve in German. So, um, but that was two beers. This was one beer. Ein Bier, bitte. Uh, and we all laughed because we said, well, what if you want to order three beers? Would it be like, drive beer, <laughs> you know, three beers, please? So we all laughed about that. But um, that was one, two, Three, I guess. Um, and when we went out now, now I went out with a couple of guys 
uh, we just went to this little pub because uh, I think it was the final day of our orientation. We got let loose early and we were on our own. Um, yeah, part of the orientation was also how to ride the train there. Uh, the train there was kind of like the subway, but they have, uh, I guess they have them here. I don't know that I've seen them, but they had subways above ground. Well, they have the metro here in Cal uh, Southern California. Uh, but the, And the metro there, you had the U-Bahn. Now, the U-Bahn ran underground, I think. U underground, yeah. But U-Bahn ran underground. That was U. And the S-Bahn, or Strasabahn, Strasa means street. Uh, the Strasenbahn ran above ground. And they had a couple different uh, S-Bahns or Strasenbahns. They had one that was kind of like a metro train and it was really fast. And they had a little, uh, kind of like a street car. The bigger one was normally from town to town and it went through the country and went from town to town. Then the one that just kind of went downtown was kind of like a bus on, on rails. Then they had the bus. They had the RTVD bus. Um, they had this one guy now, in German, there's a term called Svula. I'll get back to the... I want to talk about a, a beer real quick. This is a rant, I know, but I'm just... There's, there's so much to talk about, man. Um, now, they had this word in German called... And I know I'm going to say it wrong, but it's Svula. Svula. I don't know how to spell it. Don't even ask, but it's Svula. Svula means, like, uh, homosexual. You know, if you were to call somebody a svula, it's like calling him a homosexual. So this guy wanted off the bus at a certain stop, and the bus driver's like, Nein! Nein! And he's there! He says, Svula! And man, that bus driver slammed them brakes, and people were falling down, and, you know, because you get to stand up, too, on the bus and hold on to this rail. And people were like, whoa, man! And he grabbed this guy by the shirt and threw him off the bus, and I was like, svula? And somebody says, yeah, it means, like, homosexual, like, fairy guy, fairy man. I was like, oh, my God. So, if you go to Germany, don't call a guy Svula because you get punched in the face. Um, I guess it's a really bad term. Also, don't point. Uh, the Germans, I don't know about now, but back then the Germans didn't like you to point at them. If you be talking and you do this, they get very offended. That's like doing that to somebody. If you do that, they just don't like, they don't jab your finger at people. They, uh, you, get, you get hurt. Um, not that a lot of the Germans could fight real well. Uh, we went to a couple rock concerts, and I'm going to talk about a concert of a very famous singer, very famous singer that I went to, not this week because it happened a little bit into when I was there. So either next week or the week after, I'll be talking about a very famous concert I went to. Uh, but some of the rock concerts, you'd see fights break out, and the Germans always got beat up. Uh, it was so funny. Either the Turks would beat them down or the Americans. The Germans couldn't fight very well. Turks, man. Do not, if you fought a Turk and he started whistling, run, run. Because the Turkish guy, if you start fighting a Turk and he whistled, you know, they would jump out the windows of bars and come out of the, they would crawl out of potholes. You know, no, that's an exaggeration. But I mean, they come out of the woodwork to defend each other. If you fight one, you're fighting the whole freaking uh, ethnicity of them. I mean, <laughs> the whole country there in Germany. So yeah, if you Turks would always uh, hang out in packs. But within the pack, there were always like one or two of them. Like you'd have a couple at this bar, a couple at that bar, maybe one over the table. And if you started fighting one of them, all of them would show up. So you didn't fight a Turkish person unless you had eight or nine guys with you. Um, that was always fun. It's a lot of noise out here. Let's see how this goes when I edit. Uh, but back to the beer. So a couple of us were at, at a, we went to a little bar uh, on our own the final day of orientation, and we thought we'd drink some beer. We sat down. We said, "What kind of beer should we drink?" And there's different kinds of beers. I mean, I could go into all kinds. Of, have, uh, it seems like here in America, the most of the people that I talk to love uh, Hefeweizen. Hefeweizen. <laughs> I said that wrong. Hefeweizen. But uh, that's what most people love. But Doppelbach. Oh my God. Doppelbach. It was like maple syrup. It's really, really friggin' dark and it tastes like a real, real strong coffee and it will knock you on your ass. And then there's Eisbach. Eisbach. Now, Eisbach 
it was supposed to be like their strongest beer. That's where they really freeze it real cold and then, you know. Um, but we thought we'd drink some Icebach. We said, let's drink Icebach. Because everybody was telling you Icebach is the strongest. Icebach will knock you in your ass. We thought, let's drink some Icebach. What the hell? <clears throat> so we ordered an Icebach and we sat and we were drinking it. We, it's a pretty good beer. It really was very smooth, very good beer. We drank two apiece. All of us drank two apiece just sitting there. And we said, hey, you know what? Let's uh, head over to this other place where it's supposed to be nothing but bars. It was called Sachsenhausen. The second time I went to Germany, the second tour, Sachsenhausen was off limits to all GIs. We weren't allowed to go there because there's always fights breaking out there. But what Sachsenhausen was, was it was just like a little village, if you will, of nothing but bars. Bars on every freaking street. <coughs> so, um, but, um, so, uh, I got to close this up real quick. So, we drank two ice box, and then when we stood up, we didn't even feel drunk. We were like, this is nothing. They said, this is the strongest beer. I'm still sober. And they were like, yeah, I, we don't feel anything. Then we stood up, and it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We sat back down. We were like, okay, let's try this again. It was really weird. So, I mean, you know, you could drink it, and then you didn't really feel anything. You're like, yeah, whatever. And then you stand up, and it's almost like, holy crap. You know, you're just like, oh my God, it hits you like, um, that was just a trip. And, um, but the beer, Germans love their beer. And I'm going to go more into that as I go on. But Germans just, they would they drink beer in racks. They would have beer delivered to their house. You know how you'd have like milk delivered to your house or new, the newspaper? These guys are water. Here we have like uh uh, the water guy comes by and he delivers you your bottles of water. They would deliver racks of beer. I got to end this and then I'm going to continue it next week. But I did tell you that there was something that you shop for there that uh, is just, uh, you can shop for it here too. But it's the, the product that I was talking about that you shop there in a different way, the product is women. Women. It's the product. Oh, I'm going to catch hell for that. But it's true. They had brothels all over the place. Now, in Frankfurt, they had the red light district. And on the red light district, they had different brothels on different streets. And you would go to the brothel, and on different floors were different women. You have, like, your African-American section where they have all the black women. Most of them were from Africa or some part of Africa. To look it up. But they would have the section with all black women and they would have the Turkish women they'd have this one with all Spanish women women from Spain and they didn't have all Hispanic women um, they had another floor with all Italian women so what you do is you go to the different floors and um, you just go down the hallway and find the woman you want and pick her out <laughs> funny man but someone told us not to do that they said you know better to find a woman in a bar you know pick up and uh, you know a young woman in a bar and just kind of go out with her because they said the women in the brothels carry diseases which was true a guy in our unit man he got he got it bad he got the that's what we called it the so if you don't know what I'm talking about for those of you who know what I'm talking about leave a comment for the others and let them know what this is uh, <laughs> some guy in our unit got that and he was like walking down the barracks one night going <gasps> I said, man, what the hell's wrong with you? He goes, when I piss, it feels like I'm being electrocuted. Um, and I was like, well, you've got the... So anyway, <laughs> my neighbors were probably like, what the hell is he talking about? But that was, um, that's what we shopped for. Brothel, was, uh, we shopped for women. That's a woodpecker. That's a freaking woodpecker. Look at the woodpecker.